How's it going, IO? Today we're going to talk about Jada Pinkett Smith exposing Chris Rock, Meta's celebrity AI controversy, and TikTok's AI yearbook trend. So first up, Jada Pinkett Smith has been non-stop dropping bombs about her life. And now we find out how she really feels about Chris Rock after everything that's happened. In her upcoming memoir and tell-all interview, she gave us some more context for Will slapping Chris at the Oscars. When divorce rumors circulated about the two of them, Jada said that Chris asked her out on a date. Yes, you heard that right. Chris clearly had a thing for her. She said, I think every summer all the reports would come out that me and Will are getting a divorce. And this particular summer, Chris, he thought that we were getting a divorce. So he called me and basically he was like, I'd love to take you out. Jada said that she was confused and asked him, what do you mean? And in response, he said, well, aren't you and Will getting a divorce? And she said, no, those are just rumors. Apparently Chris was appalled that he had gotten the information wrong. So he profusely apologized and that was that. So how does that fit into what happened at the Oscars? Well, if anything, it just adds an extra layer to all the chaos that came from it. Jada also revealed that she hasn't spoken to Chris since the slap. When asked if she had any desire to talk to him, she said, I just hope that all the misunderstanding around this can be cleared up and that there can be peace. I talk about this in the book. I think that there might be some misunderstanding between Chris and I as far as the 2016 Oscars. I think that he might have taken offense, which I meant no harm in offending. That wasn't my intention, but I do think that there's a big misunderstanding there. The drama between them had been publicly brewing since 2016, when Will was snubbed by the Oscars for his performance in Concussion. That year, no actors of color were nominated in any of the acting categories, leading to the hashtag Oscars so white movement. Some artists boycotted the awards in protest, and Jada was vocally supportive of the protest on social media. She even asked Chris to step down from hosting that year's ceremony, which is something that he talked about in his Netflix comedy special. Instead of quitting, he joked about Jada during the Oscars broadcast. He said, Jada boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's panties. I wasn't invited. Seven years and one slap later, Jada said that she was not really recognizing the level of pressure that he might have been under at the time. Quote, I probably should have called him and gone, hey, are you okay? I just know that although I'm speaking out about the Oscars, I do wish you the best and I just want you to know that me taking the time to have called him and said that just to touch base, but his feelings might have been hurt. She said that after the 2016 Oscars joke, he apologized and she apologized to him as well. So she actually thought that they were good and the hatchet had been buried. They did not not talk at all for those years until 2022 came. Jada claimed that she also received an apology from Chris after the Oscars slap and in the end she wasn't upset about it considering that it put a spotlight on alopecia. She said that's what comedians do. I would just have to say that I'm not really here to make any judgment on how people decide to express themselves and express their art. I'll say that several times I've had my feelings hurt for sure. I've had my feelings hurt a lot by Chris but at the end of the day to being in the spotlight I guess it comes with the territory. So we know now how she really feels about everything. But Chris Rock is not the only person she exposed in the interview. Jada also revealed the truth about her relationship with Will and it's not at all what people expected. She claimed that the two of them have been separated and have lived completely separate lives since 2016, nearly 20 years after they married in 1997. While the two of them are still legally married, they are no longer romantically together, although they never got divorced on paper. When she was asked about why she never shared their relationship status before, she said it came down to just not being ready yet and still trying to figure out between the two of them how to be in a partnership. So they hadn't figured out how to present that to people. When asked about what led to their relationship fracture, Jada said there was a lot of reasons. Quote, by the time we got to 2016, we were just exhausted with trying. I think we were both just still stuck in our fantasy of what we thought the other person should be. Jada says that she had considered a legal divorce, but she had never been able to go through with it. She made a promise that there will never be a reason for them to get divorced and that they will be able to work through whatever. To this day, she has not been able to break that promise. Will and Jada's longtime partnership has included headlines about their entanglement with singer August Aslina and the infamous Fred Table Talk interview back in 2020. Will also published a memoir in 2021 which touched on their marriage, but it didn't reveal as much as Jada is willing to admit just now. So it's interesting to see just how much we didn't know about their relationship. Now, have you heard about Meta's celebrity AI controversy? So Meta has launched 28 AI characters that you can now socialize with. But the twist is that some of the characters are played by an AI trained on the personalities of famous celebrities and public figures. Meta insisted that the familiar faces are representing the characters, not themselves. So for instance, they offer an AI version of Kendall Jenner playing a character they call Billy, aka your new virtual bestie. Meta is working with celebrities like Tom Brady, Snoop Dogg, and Charlie D'Amelio. Initially, they had planned to pay more than $1 million to use the celebrities' likenesses, but they eventually increased the amount to include some of the big names. These chatbots are 
powered by the company's own large language model called Llama 2, with their faces functioning kind of like a mask, hiding the overwhelming complexity under the surface. So what is the point of all of this? Well, Zuckerberg suggested that the chatbots can help people with literally everything, like deciding what to have for lunch or finding instructions to make fancy dress costumes. The celebrity themed chatbots offer more directed interactions, like Snoop Dogg's clone who was just called a dungeon master. He's the one who can take people on D&D themed adventures from dragon slaying quests to cyberpunk chase scenes. Paris Hilton's is for some reason a crime solving detective. And if you want more realistic conversation, then there's Kendall Jenner's Billy, who is supposed to be the big sister Sim, or Mr. Beast, who is supposed to be a brotherly jokester. Presumably these allow users to vent while enjoying a vague sense of interacting with a sibling. But why use famous people in the first place? There's an uncanny aspect to seeing famous faces pop up on social media under different names. But it does kind of make sense. Kendall Jenner is one of the most followed humans on Instagram. Mr. Beast has the most YouTube subscribers and Charlie D'Amelio is the second most followed person on TikTok. Basically they're handpicked to help draw young people onto Facebook and Instagram and keep them there, where they can keep making money for Meta. Zuckerberg also gave his own explanation for the celebrities. He said, this is about entertainment and about helping you do things to connect with the people around you. We thought this should feel fun and it should feel familiar. But how did Meta convince all these celebrities to be a part of this? Well, some are easier to explain than others, like the fact that Paris Hilton is a self-professed huge tech geek. So why wouldn't you want to be at the forefront of this new technology? Not only that, but there is a massive payday in it for everyone. Apparently, Meta paid one top creator as much as $5 million over two years for as little as six hours of work. Of course, this also means sacrificing the rights to your face and your voice, but we're probably all going to lose those soon anyway, so who can blame someone for taking money while they're at it? So basically, Meta is paying millions of dollars to popular celebrities and social media influencers to use their virtual characters. There are still so many unanswered questions about all of this though. Like how will it affect our social lives? Well, it's been said that the AI chatbots will help you connect with the people around you. But realistically, chatting with virtual celebrities on Instagram probably isn't going to work wonders on your social life for a couple of reasons. Number one, that's time you could have spent having conversations in the real world, with social media already cutting into our attention enough as it is. And number two, who wants to be friends with someone who blows you off to talk to a chatbot? Also, we've already seen how fans can form negative parasocial relationships with celebrities online. So in this way, AI chatbots just feels like the next step on a road to complete social collapse. I mean, you might have fun with it in a way that doesn't suck up your attention, but Meta won't make that easy because capturing your attention is exactly what social media companies want. Everyone knows their business model depends on it. But AI is becoming a really big problem these days, especially in Hollywood. In fact, Tom Hanks recently had to warn people about an AI version of him that's out there somewhere selling dental insurance without his permission. Basically, he just found out that his likeness appears in a commercial. He is now insisting that that replica is fake and he didn't authorize the use of his virtual doppelganger. He wrote about this on Instagram alongside a screenshot from the ad. Quote, beware there's an AI video out there promoting some dental plan with an AI version of me. I have nothing to do with it. Tom Hanks has long been expressing his concerns about the rise of AI and how there could be a series of movies fronted by him even after his death. He spoke on the Adam Buxton podcast recently and said, I can tell you that there is discussions going in in all of the guilds, all of the agencies and all of the legal firms in order to come up with the legal ramifications of my face and my voice and everyone else's being our intellectual property. He said anyone can now recreate themselves at any age the way they are by AI or deepfake technology. He said I could be hit by a bus tomorrow and that's it, but performances can go on and on and on. Outside the understanding of AI and deepfake, there'll be nothing to tell you that it's not me and me alone. Tom believes it's going to have some degree of lifelike quality, which will not only be an artistic challenge, but also a legal one. He acknowledged that an AI generated version of himself could end up appearing in projects that he wouldn't have actually chosen, but he's not convinced that audiences will care that they aren't watching the real him. He said, without a doubt, people will be able to tell if it's AI, but the question is, will they care? There are some people that won't care that won't make that delineation. In his upcoming movie called Here, he is going to be playing younger versions of himself thanks to a tool from Metaphysic. The AI company have explained that they can create high resolution photorealistic face swaps and de-aging effects on top of actors performances. And this can happen live in real time without the need for VFX work, which is absolutely insane if you think about it. Though it's hard to deny that there are some really cool things about AI. Just think about this AI photo trend that has totally blown up on TikTok. It shows people what they would have looked like posing for high school yearbook photos in the 90s. The AI yearbook trend lets users see themselves as students in the 90s with the option of four different high school 
aesthetics, popular, sporty, smart, and grunge. It provides you with 60 generated images based on real photos of yourself. Well, how do you actually do it? So if you're comfortable sharing your likeness with an AI program, then you'll need to download the Epic app, which sadly is not free. So you'll have to pay a fee in order to be able to generate and download your yearbook pictures. So basically you open the app, select the AI yearbook option on the homepage, then upload a handful of selfies. The recommended amount is somewhere between eight to 12 with a diverse range of expressions, angles, and backgrounds. Then tap the yearbook images and wait. Once they're on the app, you'll be able to edit them with filters and different backdrops. You can then process to save your final selections as photos and a video. It is really, really cool, so you might wanna check it out while the trend is still hot. Let me know what you guys think about this news story and I'll catch you in the next one.